are about 19 million Asians living here in the United States, and they've been dubbed the model minority. What this essentially means is that people here in the United States see Asians as a good minority. They are overly educated, they go to school, they study, they have strong family bonds, and they make decent money and have good jobs. But what it really means is that in spite of the racism or any of the abuse that they suffer while they're here, they don't say anything. They stay really quiet and to themselves. They turn the other cheek and they bear it. The craziest thing about these recent attacks is that most of them have happened in the middle of the day and they're against these really elderly people. It started off with this Thai man who was just out for a walk in San Francisco and some young kid came and just threw him on the ground and he died. He eventually died from his injuries. There was another guy in Brooklyn who threw a Chinese woman to the ground and she was 68 years old or something. And I've been looking in the news and there are just more and more. There's a bunch of them. I can't even list them all here. And a lot of them are also on video and it's so disturbing to see. I can't even show you. So why is this happening? And why is it growing so intense at this moment? Well, we just spent the past five years with our leader, our former leader, who is such a xenophobe, using hateful rhetoric and abusive words and language every single day against certain people. And his followers listen to everything he says, and they take it quite literally. So he's created this incredibly divisive moment where there's so much anger and there's so much hatred here, and it flows from the top down. So people are listening and responding to his rhetoric. Secondly, because we didn't handle the pandemic properly, as of today, we just surpassed 500,000 deaths here in the United States. Deaths. So people are still at home. They don't have work. They don't have jobs. Nobody can go out. We're still under this lockdown and people are starting to go crazy. And the easiest thing to do, like we heard from the former president, is to blame it on other people. So the Asian people living in this country have become the perfect scapegoat. So what is the United States doing to combat this problem? First of all, more and more people are talking about it. Movie stars, it's in the news. So it's become more of a dialogue going on in the country. So how can people help fight these hate crimes? Uh, so there are a few big ways people can help. I mean, number one is if you see a hate crime or harassment or discrimination, report it. Because if authorities don't hear about hate crimes, they won't do anything about it. But if you have a mountain of evidence, it's impossible to ignore what's happening. Police forces, especially in New York and in San Francisco, have set up special task forces. And they're walking around in the Asian communities, obviously in the Chinatowns. And they're keeping an eye on people and, and trying to keep people more safe. Leading the department's new anti-Asian hate crimes task force, introduced today by Chief of Detectives Rodney Harrison. This task force has been built and will continue to build trust and understanding between the NYPD and the, NY and the Asian New Yorkers. Also, you know here we have a hate crime law. If somebody commits a crime out of bias and prejudice and racism, they get stiffer penalties when it comes for them to be judged for what they've done. And lastly, and probably most importantly, the Asian community is starting to stand up for their rights. They're starting to speak out and fight back. There have been protests in San Francisco and in New York. It started as an idea between rapper China Mac and actor Will Lex Hamp. The first marches were held in New York City after an 89-year-old grandmother was slapped in the face and set on fire in Brooklyn in July. So people are starting to band together and try to work together to see if we can make this problem go away. It was difficult to find information as to what's happening to the people who've committed these crimes. The one guy who killed the elderly man who was walking in San Francisco, he's in jail, but he's pleaded not guilty. He said he didn't try to kill the man, he just wanted to push him down. The guys in Brooklyn who set the woman on fire, they still haven't found. Another guy in Queens who attacked a woman and threw her on the ground, went to jail for a short time, but then they let him out, and he'll be going back, I guess, to trial. 
the thing is, a lot of this stuff is very new, so there's not much information about where these people are or what's happening. But let's hope that they meet their justice. If you have any friends or family here in the United States, and if they've suffered any kind of harassment or discrimination, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. So let's hope that people will band together. Let's hope that the Asian community will feel stronger and more empowered to stand up for their equal rights here in the States. And let's hope that these poor elderly people stop being attacked. And let's hope that the people of the United States can evolve and grow and open their mind and be accepting to other people from other cultures.